Well, kids, it's finally here. It's uh, it's basketball eve. This week of basketball in southern Indiana, how did the stars align to where we get these many great matchups in the very first week of the season? You know, we're going to look at look at two games uh, on, on this little video here. First game we're going to look at is Lagodi hosting North Davies. Great, great atmosphere there. Then we'll look at uh, uh, Bar Reeve at Washington, which is a a uh, you know historic matchup. Always the night before Thanksgiving. Um, then we'll go ahead and and go on down the road a little bit. We'll look at uh, North Davies on uh, Friday of this week, the twenty seventh. We'll be de heading down to USI to play in the River City Classic. They will take on Modern Day. Uh, Lagodi will host the uh, Lagodi tournament with uh, Rock Creek, Southwestern, Hanover, and Clarksville coming in to uh, Jack Butcher uh, Arena. So just some phenomenal games going on. Uh, also on Saturday the 30th, um, some more games down at USI. The highlight of that one will be uh, Wrights against Jasper. Uh, not to take any way, anything away from the other games uh, going on that day. Uh, I think most of us know by now that uh, Bar Reeve Memorial and Heritage Hills Bossy, uh, those games have been moved to December 10th due to the success of uh, both Heritage Hills and Evansville Memorial uh, in football. So congratulations to both those teams. Uh, very, very, you know, it's such a privilege and an honor to have a team go to state. So you, both those teams really deserve a lot of, uh, a lot of kudos. A lot of kids have bought into the system and go out and play hard every night. But uh, as much as I love football, I am a football guy. It is basketball season to me. So with that being said, let's take a look at Ligoti hosting North Davies. You know, both teams return just a, a slew of experienced guys. Uh, you know, the the one difference is the experienced guys for North Davies, they're all seniors. Uh, there are a couple seniors for Ligoti that are experienced, but the bulk of them are juniors. Um, we'll see how that comes into play. The one thing that I'm looking at at this game, if you'll think back to the games that North Davies and Ligoti played last year, very, very heated games. And honestly, in the end, it came down to one team lost their cool, which in the end turned into a loss on the court. You know, in tight games like that, in tough situations, you've really got to keep it together and you've got to be able to uh, play smart. And, and in the end, it just did not work out for uh, Ligoti. So I'm looking to see you know, which team has really worked on their mental toughness this year? You know, for North Davies, several of the basketball players played football this year, which, in my opinion, is going to benefit them greatly uh, from a physicality standpoint. Ligoti will be physical, but they're really going to need that, that physical play when they take on modern day. So, North Davies returns... Uh, of course, Jack Townsend signed with uh, D2 Ohio Dominican. Uh, Kirk Wagler, Trevor Riggins, Jalen Knepp, uh, Darren Loniger. Those guys seen action last year. I honestly think that the starting lineup will be Jack Townsend, Kirk Wagler, Trevor Riggins, Jalen Knepp, and you're going to add in freshman Jalen Mullen. Now, with that being said, um, the four seniors on the court, you know, they've been there. Uh, Jalen has played, Jalen Mullen has played some good basketball. I worry about his size and, and being, you know, getting other defensive players getting physical with him. How's he going to handle that? So coming off the bench, I think you'll see Darren Loniger. Um, Darren played football for the first time last year, was an all conference, uh, all conference guy, which is huge. That's a, that's a real testament to what kind of athlete that kid is. But you also throw into the mix Logan and Lance Wilson. 
Um, those guys had phenomenal junior high careers, and they're the type of kids, you know, you put them in the game and say, get me the rebounds, get me the loose balls, and they're going to do that. And that's huge for a team. So I really think we could see North Davies running eight deep this year. Uh, maybe not to begin with in the early season, but honestly, if, if I'm the coach, I'm getting those three freshmen as much playing time as I can early in the season so I can use them during the old national bank tournament and then get them real comfortable by the end of the season. So when it comes tournament time, I have, I have a solid eight man rotation. Now looking at Lagodi, um, I think the starting lineup will be Silas Bauer, uh, Jordan and Jalen Wildman, Landon Harder, and then you add in freshman Peyton Bledsoe. Uh, we all know what, Bauer, Wildman, and Harder can do. They're great. You know, they've been great players for Ligoti over the last couple of years. Um, got to watch Peyton Bledsoe quite a bit over the summer and was very impressed with his demeanor on the court. Uh, didn't really get ruffled, or if he did, he didn't show it. Um, you know, done a really nice job of picking and choosing when to take his shots. Done pretty good on the defensive end. So we'll see how he reacts now that it's real time. So, you know, you hope you hope both freshmen, you know, both Jalen Mullen and Peyton Bledsoe are able to come in and, and be contributors for that team. Now, from a coaching standpoint, probably my favorite kid on the Goaties team is a kid that comes off the bench by the name of Connor Hedrick. Man, I watched him over the summer. And his tenacity on defense is just phenomenal. And it's been a long time since I've seen a kid in this area approach defense the way he does. And he's he's just in your face 100% all the time. And if I'm Coach Haywood, I'm probably putting him in the lineup from the word go tomorrow night. And I'm going to say, Connor, you stick on Jack Townsend. And you stop him. Now... I don't think we can stop Jack Townsend, but I think we can slow him down. And Connor Hedrick is the type of kid that can do that. So, you know, honestly, coming into this game, it is a battle. Uh, I've got a new coach over at, at Ligoti and Coach Haywood. Uh, he's brought a new philosophy to Ligoti, and it, it, we're going to have to see how the kids have bought into it. You know, North Davies, they lost a huge, huge inside presence in um, Jack Winnegar last year. You know, the kid, Winnegar was like a 10 point or a 10 rebound a game guy. And that's huge in Southern Indiana basketball. So I want to see which one of these seniors from North Davies steps up and becomes that guy, that go to guy who gets that rebound, who gets that loose ball. That's got to happen for North Davies this year, or it's going to be a long year. You know, looking at this game, uh, it's going to be a dogfight. I have questions. Who can stop Silas? Silas is pretty good on the inside. He moves well, you know, but then at the same time, you have, you know, Jack Townsend on the other side at North Davies, shoots the ball extremely well. Kirk Wagler has shown flashes over the last few years of things he can do. So I, you know, for North Davies to be exec successful this year, I need Kirk Wagler and Trevor Riggins to really step up and be leaders. That's what North Davies needs. Now, on Ligoti's side, that is the huge question. Um, you know, can we control the tempers and who is the leader? Who is the leader on that floor? Who controls those guys when they're getting out of hand? So I don't believe in the, oh, it's early in the season. It's early in the season, but these games matter because it's the real deal. So we got to find out who's going and who's going to be the leader and who is going to step up. In the end, um, you know, I think Lagodi is going to win this game tomorrow night. It's going to be a battle, but after two close games of North Davies pulling it out by one point, I, I think Lagodi gets their win tomorrow night. All right, moving on. Let's look at Barry versus Washington. Uh, looking at Washington, 
you know, Washington had some tremendous size in um, Hunter Killian and, um, oh, just went and forgot his name. Anyway, it'll come to me in a minute. But good, the good news for Washington is they were return Grant Niehaus, uh, of course, going to play some NAIA ball out west. Um, you know, Niehaus, about 6'2", tremendous, you know, he's a tremendous basketball player. And it's my understanding he's a better soccer player than he is basketball, which says a lot about his athletic ability. But handles the ball well, uh, shoots the ball well, is able to score real well. So, he, you know, once again... In his senior season, Grant Niehaus is going to be looked at. You know, that's their leader. We know that Grant Niehaus is the leader on the floor for the Hatchets. Uh, Trey Reed, you know, it's, he's, he's probably the biggest kid that Washington has, probably around 6'5", you know, 6'4", 6'5", somewhere in there. He's going to have to have a big season for the Hatchets also because the Hatchets lost a lot of kids, not only to graduation, but a couple transferred out for either football or, you know, academic reasons they transferred out for academic reasons and so you know we're looking for some kids to step up um you know kiowa jones has been there he's been a part of the team for a couple years you know can he step in and, and and give some good minutes uh lance roach another big kid he's probably around six three six four can he come in and give good minutes but uh there are two kids at washington two freshmen and this this area is loaded with freshman talent that that are going to be I think they're going to be phenomenal basketball players over the course, you know, you look at Bledsoe at Lagodi, Mullen at North Davies, at Washington you have a kid by the name of Austin Brower and Bryson Knighty. Uh both of them good-sized kids, both of them, you know, freshmen 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in there, uh but can play basketball. So you got to wonder if coach Miller uh, you know, gets them some time and and gets them acclimated to the game to see how they can actually, you know, help out. So I have a lot of questions about Washington, just, you know, who are going to fill, you know, we know Niehaus and Reed are starting, but who's going to fill those other three starting spots and, and how is that going to work out? So there's a little bit to left, um, you know, there's some questions there with that one. Uh, Bar Reeve, of course, we all know Bar Reeve lost in semi-state to, or I'm sorry, lost in state uh, to Fort Wayne Blackhawk, you know, by about 20 points. Wasn't a real good adding, outing by the Vikings, but, you know, once again, what an honor to get to play in a state championship game up at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Um, looking at the returners uh, for Bar Reeve, you have 6'8", Keegan O'Neill, who's uh, signed to play with D2 U Indy. Uh, Bryson Graber. The kid, uh, Bryson's a junior. Uh, the court vision is phenomenal. It's it's crazy. Hagen Knapp, sophomore Hagen Knapp. Hagen is getting some looks from uh, from some D1 schools. Um, you know, so his his ceiling is uh, it's pretty high right now. You know, so it depends on how much he wants to put into it to how far he'll go. But those are your three main returners from last year. Um, a kid I was pretty impressed with over the summer, uh, Jacob Wagler, uh, played some very good basketball over the summer, looked pretty good in the scrimmage um, last Saturday. He is a, you know, he's a very good three-point shooter. So you'll look to him, you know, to get those three-point shots, but he, he, he moves pretty well without the ball also. Um, filling that fifth starter spot will be Devin Graber. Uh, Devin, a junior, uh, was pretty, you know, Devin had a phenomenal JV season last year, was very good with the ball, got to the rim very well. So, you know, the one thing you have to look at is how these kids mesh together, you know, and how they play. Over the summer, they played very well together, you know, but now that it's, it's the real deal and wins and losses matter during the season, you know, I have no doubt in my mind that Keegan O'Neill and Bryson Graber are going to lead this team. You know, when things are going bad, both of them are going to step up and 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 help pull the other guys back in. But you've got, uh, you know, you're looking 
another kid that could come off the bench and, and Jamison Miller moves pretty, you know, the younger brother of uh, Javen Miller. That's that right. Um, but shoots the ball from three well, moves pretty well. Um, questionable on defense at times, so you'll see how that one that one plays out. But you know, all in all, in the end, I, I think Barreve just has too many weapons. You know, I think Washington will probably key on O'Neill, but that leaves Hagen Nepp and Bryson Graben Graber and and Devin Graber to just do their thing. You know, Bryson Graber, his court vision, it's been a long time since I've seen a point guard around this area. And I'll go all the way back to 95 when my point guard, Aaron Bechtel, that kid could see an open guy through a brick wall. And that's the kind of kid that Bryson Graber is. You know, he's he was top five in the state in assists last year. He has just a, a crazy number of assists in two seasons. And he didn't even start until halfway through his freshman year. So that's a that's a real testament to what his court vision is. But in the end, Barreve is too much, and Barreve wins that game tomorrow. So uh, move on a little bit here. Looking at North Davies going to modern day. Um, I have I have some questions. Uh, I'm, I'm scared for North Davies in this game, just for the simple fact of I know how physical Evansville Modern Day plays. I'm hoping that the football players, their season of football will help them to adjust of how physical Modern Day plays. Because the last couple of seasons, the more physical team with North Davies ended up winning the game because it didn't seem like the Cougars wanted, it, wanted that physicality. So they kind of shied away from it. And, and it showed in games. So I'll be interested to see, you know, how is North Davies going to rebound from the game tomorrow, going down to USI, playing in a beautiful arena, and, and playing a very stout Evansville Modern Day team. So I'll be curious to see how that one plays out. You know, Ligoti, uh, very first game of the Ligoti tournament, they're taking Rock, taking on Rock Creek. Um and if I'm not mistaken, Rock Creek returns a 6'8 kid this year. That was pretty talented. I think we didn't see him last year because of a, a an ankle injury or a foot injury or something along that line. So those will be interesting games. Of course, Southwestern Hanover, we all know Southwestern Hanover went like 25-2 and, and two last year or something along that line. Uh, I think they eventually lost to Tell, to Tell City in the sectional last year. Semi-state, or semi-state, I think it was. Getting my dates all messed up there. But they will take on Clarksville. So that's a very good tournament. I like those teams that are up there at the Ligoti tournament. I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, and then later on that afternoon, I'll be heading back down to Evansville to catch, catch the matinee games there of the in the evening at the River City Shootout. Well, there it is. I know I've, um, as as usual, uh, I've gave my opinion, and I'm going to be told how much of a moron I am. So, you know, let me have it. Let me know what you think, and uh, we will talk here in a couple of days. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody.